Hello, and welcome to the InstaGo2 camera review. This review is from a runner's perspective, where I'll be testing out the camera, using it in recording on runs, hikes, and walks. However, anyone interested in this camera will find this video useful, runner or not. The video will cover the camera basics and functions, a full real life test of the camera and the different mounting options available to you, pros and cons to consider, and my final thoughts and ratings. Let's begin with the camera basics. Let's start with some stats. The camera can shoot up to 1440p in pro mode and 1080p in standard. The frame rate is 30 in standard and up to 50 in pro. It has a maximum bit rate of 80, but perhaps its biggest strength is its weight. It only comes in at 27 grams when taken out the case. Shooting modes are standard video, pro video, photo, time lapse and hyperlapse, and slow mo mode. Let's explore the case now. So the case has a few uses. Firstly, it can charge the camera up to four times in total from fully depleted to fully charged. It also has a built-in tripod, which is really useful to use on the go. And you can also pivot the case to find the right angle and hold it up very easy if you're using selfie videos or photos with the inbuilt indent at the bottom there. The easiest and best way to navigate the camera is using the buttons on the case. The white button is your option button, you can click it to connect. Once connected, you can click it again to navigate each of the video settings, as shown. Once you're ready to record, it's simply clicking the red button on the left hand side to record. This will begin recording, and you can keep the camera in the case or detach it if you like. The camera will still record even if detached. To end recording, you can simply click the button on the camera or reconnect it to the case where it will display the time of recording and click the red button again to end recording. Simple as that. The final point I want to cover in this section is the accessories. There's a range of accessories available for this camera, but I just want to focus on the main three you're going to get the most use out of. So the first accessory is the pivot stand. This can be stuck onto any kind of surface with the back as shown. It's really cool, it can allow for some different type of angles, different shot opportunities. There's a whole range of creative ideas you can use with this. Clues in the name, it can be pivoted to work with any angle. Make sure to clean the surface before and after use to ensure it sticks on. The next two are for mounting purposes. They're very basic, but they'll just allow you to use any kind of tripod you previously have. The first one is a screw-on type mount, the next one is a more of a GoPro style type mount to work with any GoPro accessories. So you'll be able to use this with a range of other camera accessories if you do own them. And these are the three accessories I would recommend you get to begin with. Let's now move on to the testing aspect of the video. On your left hand side you'll see footage shot from the chest cam and on the right hand side you'll see footage shot from the head cam. I want to directly compare the footage between the two when walking and running. So let's begin. Both shots were shot in standard video mode for this test, where I'm just simply walking on. You'll see immediately the chest cam is a little bit more jittery compared to the head camera, so there's a bit more natural stabilisation and the ability to look left and right much more easy on the head cam. So when walking in standard video mode, I'd probably recommend you use the head cam if possible, but both are viable. Next is the same walk shot in pro video mode. Pro video brings added stabilisation to the footage and that's apparently very noticeable on the chest cam. Much more stable this time and there's nothing really between the two. I would recommend if you are using chest cam to try and shoot in pro video mode if possible. Next I want to test walking up and down a hill. So this is St Catherine's Hill in Winchester and I actually walked up this hill not once but twice. So if that doesn't deserve a like. I don't know what does. Let's go into the climb then and see how both these different mounts perform going up a hill and down. What I noticed quite quickly watching back the footage is how stable the chest cam is now compared to where it was on the flats. It looks more stable, I don't know if it's because of its field of view, its different angle, but it's certainly smoother watching this back. The head cam is still as smooth as always and gives that benefit of a little bit more of peripheral view where it's higher up. But both of these look pretty solid going up and down the hill so they've passed the test. Moving on to the running test now, let's see how both these mounts get on. 
immediately you can see how just jittery that camera is on the chess cam. It really is unusable in my opinion running with, with the chess cam. Head cam way more smoother, it is a bit tilted on the angle, that's more where I've placed it on my cap more than anything else. But yeah quite a stark difference between the two here and if you are running I strongly recommend you always use a head cam mount as opposed to chest cam mount which is something I've done in all my park run video series if you are a subscriber. Just a quick point to make there, if you look back at a couple examples of my park run series you'll see a lot of footage of me using this camera as a head mount. The one I shot in Southampton was shot in standard video mode and you can see that on your screen now, an example of that. And also the one I shot in EC was in pro video mode, so you'll see example on your screen right now of that. There is a reason why I've chosen to do the different video modes for different scenarios and I'll come on to that why in the pros and cons section which is the section to follow now, so let's get into that. Let's kick off with the positives then of this little mighty camera. And number one has to be its size and versatility. The fact it's so small and so versatile, there's so many different shots you can do which may not be possible with any other camera that I know of. So because of that, you just have to get a bit creative and once you do, there's so much you can do with this. It's also magnetic, which is a really nice feature. So any kind of metal surface, you can clip it on. It's very strong, it will stay there and then you can use that as a natural mount, a natural tripod. There's a whole different range of things you can do once you know that that camera is magnetic and can clip on to any metal surface. Number two is a feature familiar with all Insta360 cameras and that's the fact that this can shoot in either 9x16 or 16x9. In other words, it can shoot in vertical or landscape video format. This can all be done post-edit in the Insta360 app. In the case for the Go 2, it does have to be in pro video mode to allow this as standard will only do one of the presets that you have selected. That's going to be really useful for the general user I think. The fact that so many people nowadays use things like Instagram stories, TikToks, Facebook reels. Vertical video formats growing and it's only going to keep growing. So the fact this camera can shoot straight off the bat in vertical is going to be so helpful for those users. For me personally I use a range of different video options so it's nice to get the shot. If I want it to be landscape, it can be landscape. If I do need it to be vertical for a different use, I can change it to be vertical. So it's really useful for me, and I think it'll be really useful for many users to be able to change that. Let's cover a couple of concerns now for this camera, and I have to begin with my biggest concern, which is its battery life. So the main reason I bought this camera was to assist with my park run series. This is where I'm running around different park run courses, trying to capture the course and kind of give my feedback on them. Now even when I pop this camera on standard video mode, which I do now, which reduces the 1080p quality which is fine, its full battery life from fully charged to depleted is around 18 minutes I've found. Now the issue here is I am quick at a 5k, but I'm not quite sub 18 quick, so I can't capture the whole course on the camera really, unless I pause it, charge it up during the course, which is a little bit annoying to do while running. So. That is a concern of mine, it's definitely a hindrance that I found. Of course if you're only using this camera to shoot in very short kind of 30 second clips and stuff like that, that's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, as I mentioned the case can charge the camera well on the move about four times from fully depleted to charge. So you do have that, but it would be perfect if this camera had about double the battery life. And I do appreciate it's a tiny camera with probably a tiny battery, so getting quite a lot out of it. But if Insta were to make a go free, I would say battery life has to be their number one priority to improve. The final main concern I want to cover on this camera is its memory capacity and specifically shooting in pro video mode. So one of the main reasons you may actually wish to shoot in standard is the fact that it takes a lot less memory compared to pro video mode. Pro video mode is amazing, it brings stabilisation, you can shoot in landscape or portrait as I explained, but it comes at a cost of a huge amount of memory size and file size. So that is an issue and the fact that this camera only comes in 32 or 64 gig in size is more of an issue as well. You'll probably find taking the 32 gig size as an example that you'll get maybe 20 to 25 kind of video shots on this of average length before it's fully full in memory size. So one of the recommendations I would give is definitely get the 64 gig version of this. It will be a little bit more in money but it's going to save you so much convenience not having to constantly delete files that you may want to actually keep to then record again. 
So those are the pros and those are the main cons of the camera. Let's just go through my final thoughts and ratings now. My final thoughts and rating on the Insta360 Go 2. I think this is a fantastic camera for what it's trying to do and trying to be. I've personally had a lot of fun owning the camera as well and I found it so useful in many settings having it. It's also effortlessly easy to take with you. It's tiny, it will fit in your pocket. If you're going on a hike, it's not exactly going to weigh you down at all. And despite the low spec qualities, the fact it can't really shoot in anything like 2K quality, it does actually hold its own in the footage as well, which hopefully you've seen watching the video. So it has very strong attributes and very strong uses. But what I would say is this is very much a camera to supplement any kind of action camera you already own. So for me, personally, I own a GoPro Hero 9 and that's already a couple of editions old now, but it's that sort of superior comparison to the Insta360 Go 2. If that can shoot in up to 5K quality, 240 frames a second, that's something that Insta Go 2 cannot do. The fact you also can't see what you're shooting as well, normally during it as well, is a little bit of a drawback, and that's why it can't be your main camera. But it's not trying to be your main camera. It's trying to be something else. It's trying to be something different. So for that, I love it. So, with everything said, I'm going to give the Insta360 Go 2 a final rating of 3 stars out of 5. Now that may be lower than what you would have expected watching this, but I can't look past the lack of memory size and battery size of the camera. I do think it holds it back in certain scenarios. But those are my thoughts and those are my opinions. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are, and if you do have any questions on this camera, I'll be glad to ask all of them. I do read all the comments. So, I hope you really enjoyed this video, it took a little bit of a while this one, so if you do leave a like it's much appreciated. And if you want to see any more footage or any videos on this camera, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. So thank you very much for watching as always and take care.